Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Graham, Dean of Academics at Eastern Gateway Community College. And I'm going to speak today on the Constitution of the United States. I by no means claim to be a constitutional scholar, but I do love to read history. In fact, for my undergraduate degree, I was certified to teach history, economics, and sociology. The point being that I enjoy looking back at cultures from both a historical and sociological perspective. From a sociological perspective, it is amazing that the Constitution even came about due to the fact of many different viewpoints on the role of the federal government. There is not much difference today in the, all the different views that exist, except in my opinion, I would doubt that the leaders of today could reach a compromise. Just my opinion. Can you imagine if the leaders of today had to put together and write a Constitution that Democrats and Republicans could agree upon? Having said that, let us look at what happened and how the Constitution came about. First, let me begin with a quote from Thomas Jefferson regarding the Constitution. He said this, and I quote, the Constitution is unquestionably the wisest ever yet presented to men, end of quote. In fact, the preamble of the Constitution is revolutionary in the history of humankind. The preamble, preamble starts out by saying, we the people. The framers of the Constitution who just broke away from tyranny, wanted the Constitution to reflect an ideology that Thomas Jefferson exemplified in the Declaration of Independence. And that is that the power of the government comes from the consent of the people. No person in government is higher than the person on the street. In fact, it is the people on the street that give those who govern their power. This was radical thinking at that time. This Constitution changed the role of government. John Adams said this Constitution was the greatest single effort of national deliberation that the world has ever seen. It was difficult to put the Constitution together. There were people who wanted a strong central federal government. There were those who did not want the federal government to have much power. They feared tyranny. But what the states had in place was not working. The states had the Articles of Confederation, which were established in 1781 for 13 states. James Madison was convinced the articles had to be replaced because each state could basically do what it wanted. After the Revolutionary War, relationships between the states were deteriorating. States were asserting their own independence. You see, there was no strong overall government. The only thing the Articles of Confederation did was to link the states together, but that was basically it. There was no permanent executive branch, no federal court like the Supreme Court, and Congress had very little power. Congress could not tax, which we might be happy with today, but Congress could not raise armies or even pay debt for states. If Congress tried to do something, the states might just say no, and during the war, some did. As a result of these weaknesses, and when it looked like the Articles of Confederation might fall apart, Madison and Alexander Hamilton called for a constitutional convention. 74 delegates were appointed from the states to the convention. Only 55 delegates attended. Not everyone was happy or trusted this convention. Rhode Island refused to participate and did not want a strong central government. Patrick Henry refused to participate, thinking that a strong central government would come about. He favored state control, believing that personal freedom would be more likely if the states control things. This should all sound familiar because this argument or debate has not gone away today. There are those today who want the federal government to do everything. And there are those who want the federal government not involved in anything. And then there are those that are somewhere in between the two extremes. Also absent from this convention were Thomas Jefferson, who was overseas, and John Adams, who was overseas. So people wondered, could this event even happen? But 81-year-old Benjamin Franklin was there along with George Washington. Franklin helped hold the delegates together. When it looked like the convention was going to collapse, Franklin said, let us just keep praying about it. Now, I'm not here to promote religion. I'm just stating what happened. So at the convention, a number of plans were submitted, and I'm not going to explain each, but suffice it to say, they varied in the role of the federal government. You had the Virginia plan, the New Jersey plan, and the Hamilton plan. Then on September 17, 1787, the compromise happened, and the Constitution was agreed upon. It took the delegates four months to agree on a compromise. Although 55 delegates participated in the Constitutional Convention, 
there were only 39 signatures. Some left and others refused to sign because of disagreement with the document. Before the constitution could be put into place, nine of the 13 states had to agree to it and ratify it. It took another 10 months to get nine states to approve the constitution. But even this was not enough. The fear of government was strong and many pushed for a bill of rights in addition to the constitution. By the fall of 1788, Madison was convinced that a Bill of Rights was necessary to get broader support of the Constitution. A Bill of Rights was barely discussed at the Constitutional Convention, yet by December 15, 1791, 10 amendments were ratified by three-fourths of the states. These amendments are the famous Bill of Rights. It is these Bill of Rights, protection of the people, that helped unify this newly created nation. It is these Bill of Rights that separates this nation from many throughout the world both historically and today. These 10 amendments provide for the liberties that many take for granted today. Freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of religion, freedom to assemble peacefully, freedom from search and seizure, and the right to a speedy and public trial. These are the rights that do not exist in a police state or a dictatorship. These rights were revolutionary. So in conclusion, we now have the three equal branches of government, each with their own power. This separation of power keeps us free. We should be skept skeptical of anyone who tries to take our freedoms away. The Constitution was put together by remarkable men of greatest historical documents ever created by human beings, the Constitution of the United States. Thank you.